Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great KubeCon. I'm here today to talk to you about Witness. It's a new framework for supply chain security from TestifySec. My name is Cole Kennedy. I am the CEO of TestifySec. Uh, we were founded about seven months ago and uh, we were founded really to solve this problem around uh, uh, supply chain security uh, with respect to software and, and vendors and, and other compliance concerns. Uh, you know, our team is growing, uh, you know, it's probably probably going to be bigger uh, next week. Uh, so we're really excited to have everybody on board as, as we as we solve this problem. Um, you know, it's not just me here. It's, we have a great team of experts uh, and, you know, we've got a lot of plans coming up. Um, so, but here I'm talk, here to talk to you about Witness. Um, you know, we started working on Witness uh, after KubeCon last year. You know, Mikhail and I sat down and really looked at the complexity of you know solving this uh, supply chain problem, right? How, how do we how do we verify that artifacts are what we expect them to be? Um, so we created this att attestation framework. It implements the total spec, including the ITE five, ITE six, the ITE seven. Uh, you know, myself, Mikhail worked together with the community uh, around some of these specs and, and did some implementation in in the upstream repositories. Um, we also use Open Policy Agent. We changed the layout uh, specification from the uh, standard Intoto layout to something that was a little bit more flexible and allowed us to use some tools uh, you know, that have come about since that, that layout was created. And we also have extensible support for different backends and different types of attesters. Uh, so right now we support ReCore as a, one of our pluggable backends, and then we have several attesters that, that we'll be going over, go over in a little bit. And really what we wanted to do was provide a framework that was robust enough to meet SALSA level four providence requirements and eventually uh, meet SALSA level four, be able to automate the um, guarantees around SALSA level four and be able to create policy against those types of um, um, constraints. So what is SALSA level four providence requirement? So we need to have all that providence needs to be available. We, we meet that by publishing that providence to record. We need to make sure that providence is authenticated. Right? We sign all the providence within witness uh, with either Spiffy Spire or, you know, for machine identity, or we use full seal for, for user identity. And that kind of coincides with service generated providence, right? With the whole point of witness and in total is to automatically generate uh, the inputs and outputs of, of a compilation process. So we do that by implementing the Intel spec. Uh, non falsifiable, right? That that goes into uh, our ability um, to use short lived certificates or short lived keys, as well as a timestamp for record to ensure that. You know, these attestations are signed, but not only that, the private key material that they're used to uh, sign uh, is protected. Um, and then finally, we want to make sure that all the dependencies is complete, right? We have a full build materials of, of what went into that build. And we do that through our uh, tracing ability within Witness. Um, so let's go over Witness's trust model, right? You know, you see the turtle there, because it really, Zero Trust is all about, you know, finding that bottom turtle and get rid of it. And we do that by implementing Spiffy Spire um, to uh, authenticate identities, uh, machine identities, rather than using tokens. So we use remote attestation uh, to, uh, to verify the identity of the machines that uh, are doing the build process. Uh, second, we, we incrementally establish trust with these cryptographic documents. Um, so if you're running a build, uh, on GitLab, on AWS infrastructure, you have two cryptographic documents available to you, right? You have the AWS metadata service, and then you also have that JWT that GitLab provides. So we use those documents as well as other data that's available within the system in the process to uh, create these attestations. And then, you know, like I said above, right, we use these ephemeral short-lived signing keys to sign these attestations. Um, signing um, automated workloads with hardware, hardware keys is very, very difficult. Um, by introducing Spiffy Spire, we, we kind of solved some of these problems and we're able to automate the process of signing these attestations while retaining trust and protecting that private key material. So we're talking about signers, we actually support multiple signers right now and hopefully in the near future we'll support more. 
Um, but the way the citing works is that we take all these, these documents, these attestations, and we bundle them together into one JSON file. And then we sign that uh, using uh, the DSSE uh, envelope. Um, and we need some keys to actually do that signing. So while we say keyless, right, we actually do receive keys from, um, from Folsio, right? We, give, we receive the signing certificate from Folsio when we, when we sign the stuff with those user identities. And then, you know, in the CI process, that doesn't always work so well. So we implement uh, uh, Spiffy Spire to actually verify the workload identity of whatever the builder container or the builder agent uh, to make sure that, hey, yes, this is exactly what I want to build my, my binary and I trust it. Um, and then finally, because we're using those short-lived keys, those certificates are only valid for a very short period of time, or, I mean, over minutes or, or hours maybe. Right, so that workload's probably gonna get scheduled when that certificate has expired. So we need a different way to make sure that uh, those attestations were signed during the certificate validity period. It, and we do that by, by doing another timestamp on top of that signature. Right now, this capability is fulfilled by, by ReCore. Uh, when we upload the attestation to ReCore, uh, that attestation uh, then receives a timestamp and is stored on a log for non-repudiation. Uh, so we talked a little bit about cryptographic document support, right? So during the witness attestation process, we look through, we look for these different types of documents. Um, um, so like I said, if you're running on GitLab, we find that JWT that has all the information about that that CI runner in and and what what generated it. So we can tell who did the la who made the last commit on that by by inspecting that JWT, uh, we can figure out uh, what project that came from. Uh, we can uh, identify all different sorts of permissions and information metadata about that, that running process that we can then apply policy to. Same goes with the AWS metadata service, right? We take that metadata and put it into a JSON document that we assign. Well, this gives us these trusted selectors that we can then establish policy against. Um, and we'll go through this a little bit more. Uh, but currently, we support uh, Google Cloud, AWS, uh, generic JWT tokens, as well as GitLab. Um, we encourage uh, contributors to, to add additional attestors to witness uh, and just reach out if you need help with that. Um, then finally, the last part of witness, and this is really the most exciting part of it, is we need something to do with all these attestations, right? How can we make them actionable to improve our security posture, posture and efficiency? So we have a policy engine embedded within witness. It's witness verify. But policies define, you know, what attestations must be satisfied. So within that policy document, you may say you want a GitLab attestation for this step, you want a GCP attestation for this step, and then you want a command run attestation that has a trace on it. Uh, so you define that, and then within those attestations, right, you can also uh, attach uh, Rego policies that must pass in order for that policy to be satisfied. Um, so now we have this trusted sign data uh, that we can evaluate with our policy engine to understand whether uh, this workload meets our policy or, or does not, and then we can decide what we want to do with that. Um, and then the last part of this is that we also enforce the cryptographic identities that are allowed to execute. And, and what this means is that, hey, we, we inspect the, the public certificate that was used to sign, um, sign that attestation, and, and we can uh, check the certificate constraints on that to see you know, who signed it and if they were allowed to sign it. Uh, we also uh, embed the certificate authorities that we trust within that policy. So kind of a blown out picture, we have a lot of words on the screen. So to, to, to backtrack, what we do is we take these um, identity documents, whether it be the cloud instant metadata, uh, some sort of a JWT, uh, along with the source files and materials, we create an att attestations for all of those. We execute the command that we specify. And then this command, during when that command is executed, we trace all the materials that go in and out of that command. And then we bundle all these together in what we call an attestation collection. This attestation collection is signed uh, by a key provider and then up, uploaded to a backend store. We'll blow it out a little bit more for more um, 
a CI approach of what this looks like, right? So ReCore is our evidence leg. We're normalizing all of our evidence, putting it in ReCore, and then we're able to evaluate policy against that normalized evidence. Uh, Witness Verify is a library. Um, and so we're currently working on a admission controller that will enforce these policy documents uh, in a Kubernetes environment. But really the library can be implemented in just about any piece of software where you need to verify the providence of whatever you're running. So I'm gonna go through a few use cases and hopefully this will give you a little bit better understanding of exactly how witness fits into your environment. Um, so one of the most important things we wanna do is that make sure that all of our software is built on the physical machines that we trust, right? These machines are a part of our system security plan these machines that have been, you know, attested to uh, our chief information security officer, we should make sure that our builds are actually coming off of that and uh, we don't have a rogue developer that is uh, um, bypassing the CI process in order to get his feature into production. So uh, what we wanna do here is we wanna take, uh, we create a GC, we create a Regal module specific to our GCP project, right? We can see here at Testify SAC, our GCP project, it numbers 324-3222. So when we apply this policy into, into our admission controller, any of the builds that don't have an attestation that prove that it was built at least once on our infrastructure will not get admitted into uh, the cluster and that workload will not be executed. So next, we want to verify that an artifact actually did pass a uh, static analysis testing. Um, so in a lot of organizations, you may have, you know, dozens of CI systems, right? And to understand, you know, the compliance of each artifact that comes out of each of those CI systems, it's a really difficult task. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to create some policy that says, hey, every single artifact that goes into our production system must have a SNCC uh, priority score of less than 510. So now we create this policy and we, uh, we implement it within our admission controllers in this Kubernetes cluster. And now this means that any, any of the workloads that are, are scheduled must, uh, must pass our policy for static analysis. Right? We're not allowed to bypass this because the developer's in a hurry or maybe there's a misconfiguration or, or some other situation that, that's happening. And finally, this is, this, is, this is something that is usually very, very difficult to mitigate against. And if uh, your compiler was compromised or has a critical vulnerability uh, that transfers that vulnerability into your software, it's gonna be really difficult to sift through everything in production to figure out exactly what was compiled by that malicious or vulnerable compiler. Um, but if you have tracing enabled uh, within witness uh, while your CI process is running, right, we actually collect that information. So uh, we have the, uh, the digest of every single process uh, that, uh, that happened during, the, during this step of the CI process, as well as all the files that went into that, all the intermediate files and all the outputs. Uh, and, we can take those digests and compare them against vulnerability database or, or different threat databases to understand a uh, more granular risk level of, of that workload. So I'm gonna go into a demo now. Uh, what we've done is we've taken the Spire project, uh, the CNCF Spire project, and we use this internally uh, uh, at Testify. So we really want, and it's probably the most critical security component of our system. Um, so in order for us to trust it, we want to make sure that uh, the Spire server running on our infrastructure was built by us, was approved by uh, myself or another engineer that, that has that approval status, and that it passes the static analysis testing. Um, and then we verify that before we, we push it off into production. Now it's time for a demo. The first demo we're gonna show you is a an attestation of a developer's commit. And we're gonna use that attestation to verify in our, in our CI pipeline that uh, a developer that we trust actually created that commit so we can kick off the rest of that pipeline. 
Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is actually, you know, create a file, and then we're going to commit that file. So what you're going to see here is we have a post commit hook uh, that runs witness. And witness is, is configured in the in the commit hook to actually do an OIDC uh, credential verification with uh, Fulcio, where it's going to get those certificates and, and sign that attestation. Uh, so we can see right that attestation worked. Now we should have uh, a CI pipeline kicking off here. Oh, well, we got to push it first, right? All right, so we'll go ahead and push it. And then that should be kicking off here pretty soon. We'll go ahead and look at this clone step. Now you can see this clone step succeeded because we used the correct credentials uh, when we made this commit. Now let's try it again and use some incorrect credentials and see what happens. We'll go ahead and use my personal credentials here. Those are not specified on the policy. And there you see uh, this step failed because we used the wrong credentials to make that uh, commit attestation. For our next demonstration, what we want to do is we want to make sure that all of our Spire agents actually get compiled on infrastructure that we trust, right? We want to make sure that, you know, it's not being compiled on some de developer's computer sitting underneath their desk um, or by a malicious actor, right? We want to make sure that everything that goes into production uh, gets built on our production, on our production CI system where we have our, our checks and we have our, our we're in compliance. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. What we're going to do is we're going to go, let's go here in the build agent, and we can see that we have some attestation data that was generated. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We have a little attestation viewer here that we created. So we look at the GCP IIT attestation, we can see we have a JSON file with a bunch of trusted selectors. Uh, and one of the selectors that we have is that this build was created in this specific project ID. Now, and if you go look at our repository, you see Right, that matches what's in our policy. So let's go ahead and, and see what this looks like to do this offline verification of our policy, uh, as well as we'll go change a couple of things around and, and see if our policy still, still passes. So as part of the last step of the pipeline, we actually publish these artifacts. So feel free to go ahead and download these yourself. Uh, but we, we publish the public key that corresponds to the policy. We publish the policy, and then alongside that, we publish the artifacts that we can verify. So we've actually downloaded some of these artifacts ahead of time. So the first thing we're going to do is actually uh, verify uh, the Spire agent. And we're going to verify that it was built on that GCP uh, project ID and that it passes all the other constraints that we have on our policy. 
I'm always doing right now is it's uh, looking in Recore for all those attestations. And then as part of those attestations, some of them will get more references. We call these back references to things like the pipeline URL or the commit hash. Well, we can, we can go and find more attestations that may correspond uh, to that CI pipeline. Uh, essentially building out the entire Providence graph required to satisfy that policy. And you can see verification succeeded. And if we look at any of these uh, indexes right here, you'll see that, hey, when we go there, that's that actually, that's that signed attestation um, for that artifact and that step. So what happens if we change that, right? So here we've actually changed the GCP uh, number in the policy. And we're gonna have, go ahead and see if this one verif verifies. And there we go, right? We don't have the evidence we need to satisfy uh, that policy. Finally, I want to show what, what we do with tracing. So let's go ahead and pull up uh, an attestation. All right. So this is a command run attestation. And when we see this is a command that we're running, we're building the Spire agent. We can see exactly the parameters that were passed into it. Um, but more than that, we're running a trace on this process and we have full permissions over it because we're actually wrapping it. And this allows us to grab, you know, all the sub processes, uh, all the executors, as well as all the open files um, that went in and out of that, this, this process. Uh, so this gives us a lot of information uh, about possible vulnerabilities uh, that may be introduced in, into our system. And, and this is, we can create policy against these items just like anything else. So. If there's a malicious compiler that's identified, uh, we can now backtrack and find everything in our system that was compiled using that malicious compiler. Um, and another situation where this works out really well is something like Heartbleed, right? We, we want to figure out um, all the different all the different places where the vulnerable version of, of OpenSSL was compiled into our software, right? This is really, really difficult to do unless we have really good accounting of what it went into our software. And that's what we're doing here. We're accounting for everything that, that goes in and keeping track of it. So we can look that up later. Um, with that, that's the end of our demonstration. And uh, let us know if you have any questions. We'll be on the live stream. And then I think we have someone there in person too. Um, so if you see Frederick around, uh, make sure you say hi.